Welcome to the Red Cloud Research Roundup, hosted by Red Cloud Financial Services. It's June 13th. This week from the Red Cloud Securities Research Team, mining analysts Taylor Convolusier, Kobe Kushner, and Timothy Lee are here to discuss the major events of the week in their coverage universes. Taylor, why don't you kick us off? Hello, and thank you for the warm welcome. Welcome to Episode 9 of Red Cloud Securities Research Roundup Podcast. I'm Taylor Convolusier, a mining analyst at Red Cloud. Kobe, Tim, and I are pleased to join you today as part of an ongoing series of discussions with the Red Cloud Research Team. This week, I'll be speaking about Trillium Gold Mines. We currently have a buy rating and $1.80 price target on the stock. Trillium is a Red Cloud banking client. Last week, Trillium announced that it has commenced exploring its newly consolidated Confederation Belt project in Red Lake that comprises over 54,000 hectares. We note that Trillium has been acquiring properties in the Confederation Belt over the previous year and it has now built up a critical mass of prospective land in the belt with a contiguous land package spanning 72 kilometers east to west. We have previously emphasized that this area has been receiving increased attention from majors with Kinross's acquisition of Great Bear and Barrick's option agreements with Knorland, Dixie Gold, and Red Lake Gold. I'll note that all those companies are not rated. In our view, Trillium has positioned itself as one of the dominant exploration companies in Red Lake and it should be garnering more attention from the market. The company is currently gearing up for a planned 6,000 meter drill program at the Confederation Belt project. Exploration permit applications for drilling and trenching have been initiated and are expected to be received in early summer 2022. Further drilling would likely follow based on initial results. Preliminary fieldwork is already underway and further prospecting and mapping is also planned. We look forward to the 2022 exploration program at the Confederation Belt project, as this is likely the first time all these properties have been consolidated and can be explored with a comprehensive district scale approach. A significant discovery here could be game changing and attract the attention of majors that are looking for a tier one deposit in a tier one jurisdiction. Kobe, over to you. What have you got for us this week? Good summary, Taylor. I'm going to shift gears here and talk about a green energy metals company called Megawatt Lithium and Battery Metals. That's Mega on the CSE, and it's a not rated stock, and it is a Red Cloud banking client. Megawatt's technical team completed a site visit to its Arctic Fox and Isborne projects in Australia. They completed some early stage exploration work, including rock chip samples. The important takeaway here is that the team's visit reinforced the potential for rare earth elements at both properties and helped confirm logistical requirements for a more extensive exploration program, which should include some ground truthing of at least six geochemical anomalies. The company has been putting more focus onto these projects as of late, which we think comes at the right time and the right place. Fundamentals for rare earth elements have been improving on the back of heightened demand for EVs, which require rare earths for use in their motors. China controls somewhere between 70 to 80% of the global rare earth market, and we're seeing an increasing trend of other countries taking measures to help secure their domestic supply. These projects are also well located in a highly prospective region in Northern Territory, The Nolan's Bohr Rare Earth and Uranium Deposit is contiguous to Arctic Fox, and this is one of the largest rare earth deposits being developed today. It's also next door to the Salta Uranium and Rare Earth Project, and the nearby Charlie Creek Deposit. Evidently, and despite its name, Megawatt is much more than a lithium company. With nine prospective projects to advance across Canada and Australia, it has exposure to a wide spectrum of commodities, Lithium, copper, cobalt, scandium, rare earths, nickel, uranium, etc. All wrapped in a sub $10 million market cap company. This makes it a very easy way to play the green energy thematic. Tim, I hear you also want to discuss green energy metals. Thanks, Kobe. First, I will talk about Canada Nickel Company. That's CNC on the TSX Venture. Canada Nickel is a Red Cloud banking client, and Red Cloud owns shares of CNC. This week, Canada Nickel announced the acquisitions of additional properties in the Timmins area of Ontario. The company has been consolidating ownership of numerous nickel targets that have characteristics similar to its flagship Crawford deposit. The latest acquisitions include the Bannockburn property, which has seen a fair amount of exploration, including historic and recent drilling. 
Bannockburn hosts multiple zones of ultramafic hosted nickel, including the B zone, which has been successfully drill tested for 600 meters of the 1.3 kilometer strike length based on geophysics. Historical mineral processing work also demonstrated the ability to generate a 35% nickel concentrate from material taken from Bannockburn. The company also acquired the Newmarket property, which extends a sizable 8.4 kilometer long ultramafic target from the company's adjacent man property. Also, I would like to talk about Silver X Mining, that's AGX on the TSX Venture Exchange. SilverX is a Red Cloud banking client, and Red Cloud owns shares of the company. This week, SilverX reported an updated resource estimate for its Nueva Recuperada mine in Peru. The new estimate includes an inferred resource of 14.9 million tons, grading 163 grams a ton silver, plus 0.47 grams a ton gold, 2.5% lead, and 2.5% zinc. It also includes, for the first time on this project, a measured and indicated resource with just over 840,000 tons. Overall, the tonnage of the resource more than doubled from the previous estimate, and the silver equivalent ounces increased by over 150%. The company recently completed a mill upgrade to 720 tons per day, and it is now well poised to ramp up production. Most of the resources in the Tangana mining unit which is the area the company is actively mining and developing at this time. The updated resource provides for near-term production and also positions this project to have a long mine life. As a result, we have extended the mine life in our financial model, and this led to an increase in our target price to 95 cents from 85 cents previously. Thanks for listening to the Red Cloud Research Roundup. We hope you enjoyed the dive into recent notable mining news. Remember, you can join us every Monday for new episodes. And as always, you can head over to redcloudsecurities.com for full disclosures and to sign up for our email list. That's it for this week, and we hope to see you next time.